Hi everyone and welcome to another session of Building Blocks. I'm Judy Brown from the Little Fabric Garden and today I've got a cute little project uh, that I'm going to show you and it is this little guy right here um, and you know when you first look at it maybe from afar you think oh oh it's a it's a tree skirt well no it's not it's only about uh, 18 inches in diameter uh, but you could make it bigger and I'll explain that a little bit later but this is what we're going to be working on and it is uh, might look a little harder than it really is and I will show you how we're going to do it okay so here in front of me I have a whole conglomeration of things and these are things that we are going to be uh, be using uh, first of all uh, I have uh, four red colors and uh, for green. So there are eight, and you can do these in any colors you want to. They could be all green, they could be all red. Um, they don't even have to be Christmas if you want to, you know, keep them uh, during the winter or if you are one of those people who really like the outdoor, the tree look, you know, you can do that uh, too. Uh, I've used this for a candle mat uh, and it works out really nice. Or if you had like a Christmas decoration, those you know like a big bowl and you could put um, oh you know like the ornaments and stuff in there the different ornaments and that would look really really cute you know sitting on here so anyway these um, fabrics are cut at five by seven so I have uh, four green five by seven I have four red uh, then I also have uh, a little piece of brown and um, a piece of yellow all right, you know, uh, the yellow for the stars and the brown, little piece of brown down here for the, um, the, the trunk of the tree. Now, also, I, um, I have these already cut out. These are the, um, the templates that I'm going to be using. And I did this out of um, cardboard. You can do it out of anything. There's um, paper that you can buy. I can't remember what it's called right now. It's not in there it's not coming out but but anyway um, I just drew the the rec or the triangle and uh, that's what I use for these and I've got the the you know the little thing for the tree trunk and uh, the star and this was the hardest for me to draw because it didn't want to look like this it wanted to look something different all right so oh and I also have um, this piece of fabric this is a uh, three-eighths of a yard of um, a green fabric that I am going to be using for the binding uh, of this. And uh, when we get to that point, we are going to have to cut it on the bias because this is round and you have to be able to have some stretch to it. And uh, I will uh, show you how to do that. I already have mine cut because when I was getting ready, I thought I would get it, you know, like I cut the strip so I could show you the strip. Well, I cut it wrong. And I had all these goofy little pieces, so I decided I was gonna finish it up and have it all ready to go instead of um, cutting it uh, on camera and have it be wrong <laughs> and for you. So, so anyway, but this is what you need, about three-eighths of the fabric for the binding. Um, and the reason you need so much is because you do have to cut it on the bias. All right, so that's what that is for. And then these three pieces, uh, this green is going to be uh, the top. Yeah, there's the, the green there. And this is um, the batting, going to be in the middle, and this is going to be the backing of, of this. And what I did with this is I, I cut a 5 eighths of a yard of fabric, and then I opened it up, and on the fold line, I cut it so instead of having like a fat quarter you have a fat five eight you, know, you have a piece that is like 22 and a half by about 21 and those are the size of the pieces uh, the batting piece here is a little bit smaller and as you can see it's got a piece of tape on here and it's because I pieced it together uh, I had a you know I had a whole bunch of uh, batting uh, and so I decided I was just going to um, you piece it together and use it and I put that tape on it that iron on tape so these are this is everything that we're going to need to to get going oh and we also need the fusible uh, the double fusible uh, batting that's not batting but the, the fusible so that we can um, 
glue these guys down, the, the trees down. And there's a couple different kinds that you can use. And I always use Wonder Under because that's the one that I always use from a million years ago. Now there's um, the, a couple different other ones to use and they're all really good and I've used them, but this was the first one that I used and I, I know how to use it better than the others and it, it just, it's more comfortable for me, but you can use whichever one is, uh, is easiest for you. So, um, uh, and when we get to that point, I'm just, we will be drawing on one side and then fusing it down and I will be doing that uh, showing you how to do that also. So first things first, we need to get these little guys cut so that they look round and you can see what I did here. I'm, I will open it up. All right, so this is the size that it was. This is like the 22 and a half and then uh, by about 20. So I just, I fold it in half. really did and then I folded it again and then I folded it this way to make a, a triangle okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna just kind of lay it here and hidden under here I have the pattern for this and this is going to go on here like this. I'm just going to lay it on there and it fits, you know, pretty much. It's not perfect, but it's pretty much. Um, I brought a Sharpie and there's a couple different ways. If I was really brave or if I had something that was um, a little bit stronger than a piece of paper, I might take my rotary cutter and just go around it. It would be the fastest way to do it. But, um, you know, since I have the paper, I am just going to uh, with a sharpie, just kind of, um, kind of just draw, draw this, kind of trace it. So you can see that what I have here, and then I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut it. I hope I can get through all four. It's been a while since I've had these sharpened, so we'll see. So then when you open it up, you have the size that you need, okay? And I am going to do the same thing with the other two pieces, with the batting and the backing. All right, so as you can see, I have traced and cut all the pieces that we need for the mat itself. And as I said before, this is going to be the backing, this is the, our batting, and then this is going to be the front. So what I'm going to do is lay them down the way they're supposed to be. And I'm going to move this out. I, I do need this in a bit, but I'm just going to move it out of the way a little bit. All right, so I'm going to put this face down. You know, the, the pretty little fabric is going to be face down. And next I'm going to put the, the batting. And they should line up pretty well. And if they don't, it's not, you know, it's nothing to super worry about. And as I told you before, I had pieced this. And you know, everyone that quilts has tons of little pieces left from, um, you know, from your quilts and whatever. And we find lots of nice things to do with them, stuffed pillows. Uh, we make uh, pot holders and different things like that. We use them in there. But you know, if you save them and you want to put them together so you can use them again, you can, you know, there's tape that you can buy and you just butt them up and then you iron on and it holds them together or else you can zigzag them, you know, and uh, hold them together. A lot of people do that too if you, you know, if you don't have the tape. So, so anyway, I've got that and now I am going to put this on top. This is going to be our top piece. And do you think I could have found a green that could have been any brighter than this? Probably not, but I just loved it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stick a couple of pins uh, in this because I, I don't want to spray it uh, here. And I'm just going to like hold it, just want to hold it together for you. So I've got a, a few pins and I'm just going to stick them around the edges to 
to hold on to it and then I'm going to move it out of the way and show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so just stick it in just to hold them together. I don't want it to move too much. Let me just, and then I'll get it out of the way. Oh my goodness. Yep. And I'm going to have to do some trimming on this. I can see that. It always amazes me when you use the same pattern for three things and you get three, three different sizes. It, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. When I flipped it over, everything's fine till I get over to this side. Maybe if I do this a little bit, maybe it won't be quite so bad. No, it's not too bad. Yeah. I guess it's the way it's folded. If you don't get it folded, real straight then sometimes it ends up being it turns into a different size all right i think maybe one more pin i'm going to stick over here and then i'm just going to move it over here and show you what we're going to do next all right so this is kind of pinned or kind of sandwiched it's not like a real good sandwich but it's going to be good enough for right now so we're just going to move that over here and the next thing is we have to get our pieces um, cut for our trees. And how we're going to do that is we have our piece of Wonder Under. We have the Wonder Under, and you are going to trace it. I had a half a yard of Wonder Under is what I used. And I took my, um, my patterns that I have over here, took my patterns, and I laid it on... Um, the back side or the smooth side of the Wonder Under. There's two sides to this. One side is um, kind of bumply and that's where the, uh, the glue is and uh, the other side is smooth. So I, I put my pattern here and then I traced it and after I do that then I just take this and I put it on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm going to put this here I'm going to lay it here and I'm going to take it over to the iron. I'm going to get, grab the iron and I'm just going to fuse this down. Now that the glue that's on, on that, um, I'm just going to glue it down like this. You can see that it's stuck on there. And I'm going to do the same with our little tree trunk. And you have to make sure that you're putting it on the wrong side of the fabric. I've done it on the right side of the fabric and it doesn't work that way. So and then here. Yes. Another thing to remember is not to turn it this way with the glue up because if you do guess where you're going to find your star on the bottom of your iron I've done that before too all right so I've got my three three of them done for one for one of the the little guys and so now I have to cut these pieces out and so just cut on the line like that And a lot of times I use um, one of those fine tip uh, Sharpies to do this, but um, I really like using the pencil better. Uh, I don't know why, I just, um, it just seems to work better for me. But I know that a lot of people, and I included, have used a, uh, that ultra fine Sharpie to do it. And you get a nice, nice uh, even, mark on it but I, I just like the pencil better I don't know why so star is almost done and then my teeny tiny little tree trunk okay so there's my star and here's my little tree trunk all right so here is Here's what we have so far. We've got the tree, the star, and the trunk. And when we put them on 
we will be putting them here I can just slide this over a little bit so you can see that all right so it's going to be like this the little tree trunk will go under here and the little star no this will go down farther I think uh, after I get them all uh, cut and arranged you know we'll, we'll be able to even it out and it'll be like this so that will be one of them and when we go to do this what we will do is we've got the paper on the back and of course you can't have that so you will just um, yeah we will loosen this from the back Oops. Okay. we'll take the paper off and it's got the glue on the back and then you will lay it on and we will um, iron it on so uh, what I think I'm going to do off camera is get these pieces all cut and then we will come back at, uh, and arrange it and then we'll get them pressed down show you all right that. so as you can see while we were away from the camera we've got uh, the pieces all cut and the stars we've got the, the little tree trunks everything is ready to go so uh, I had the Oh, the little ironing board but it wasn't flat and I couldn't get this you know the a round piece on it so I went back and just got the, the back end of a table topper and that's what we're going to use for our little ironing board to finish this project so now I'm going to set these up and uh, how I'm going to do it is I'm going to put do the green ones first and I'm just going to put them opposite and of course it's not going to be perfect because mm, nobody's perfect and I am going to do it this way all right and then in the openings I'm going to put the red ones just kind of lay them down see if, if I like them like that this one's way too far in the middle we just need a little bit of space we have to get the tree trunk and then we have to have about this much space so that we can get that binding on there and put this one here and this one here okay so now I'm going to take the tree trunks and I'm going to put them in and then I can adjust maybe now they're looking like trees instead of little triangles so I can move this guy down a little bit You know, and if you don't, you know, like when you do this, if you don't like the layout, like, oh, gee, maybe I, you know, I don't know if I like those two together, or maybe I should put something else over there. You know, this is the time to do it. Um, you know, move them around and find the way that's pleasing to your, you know, your eye. That's what's important. Since you're the one that's making it, it's pleasing toward to your eye. And, you know, like some people are um, very specific about having it, you know, same distance. And if you want to do that, that's fine. And, you know, but I am, I'm not one of those people. So mine are, they're not going to be perfect and they're all, all over the place. Oops, I think I have one more tree, one more tree trunk left over. Okay, so I've got those guys. Now I'm going to put my, put the stars on. Put them on the top, see what it looks like, see if they need to be moved anywhere. Yeah, I like this yellow fabric. It's got like little orange dots in it too, kind of like orange dots. So we can move them around also. Stars aren't all the same, so yeah, I think I'll put them this way. Okay, so let me take a peek, see if I like it. I'll turn this little guy. Don't like him like that. Turn him. It's just like I 
said, what you like, what's pleasing toward to you, and perfect but it's going to be it's going to do all right so now we have taken the paper off of the back so it's ready to glue down so all I have to do is take the iron and you know put it on on top and just hold it I think I'm going to start with these guys over here so I'm just going to press it down This wouldn't take quite so long if I had the big iron. But. And like I said before, um, if I was doing this at home, I probably would have used the the spray adhesive to do the um, to sandwich it. But I did not. I didn't want to do it on the table. I was afraid to get on everything else here, so that's why I just stuck a couple of pins in here. But at home, I definitely would have used the uh, the spray. It would hold it better, uh, and then I wouldn't have to worry about getting poked by those pins. Okay, so now they're all glued down, so they're not going to go anywhere, they're not going to move on me, uh, and so uh, I'm just going to leave this for right now, and then um, I'm going to show you the, the binding part of this, and then, uh, then we will come back to uh, doing the blanket stitch uh, and showing you how to do that uh, to get this all finished off, okay? All right, so I have taken taken this and I've put it over here for now where it's going to rest over here until I get this next section done. And this is where I messed up when I was getting ready for this video yesterday. Because this is round, we need a, a, a binding that is cut on the bias. And that means that you need it to be cut at a 45 degree angle so that it has some stretch. When you have your fabric and um, on the straight of the, the grain, it does not stretch. It is, you know, pretty solid. You can snap it. And if you have that and you try to use that kind of a binding on a circular uh, project, it's just not going to work. It's not going to go around smoothly. You're going to have puckers. It's going to bunch up and you are probably going to roll it in a big ball and throw it in the closet. All right, but what you need is to get it cut so that it's on the bias, and when it's on the bias, you can definitely tell because it has stretch, and you can see the stretch in it. All right, so uh, what you need to do is, and I don't know if this is exactly right. I know it has to be uh, at a 45 degree angle, and I did get that done, but I had to cut into little pieces because um, I the, because I had messed up yesterday and I had to use the pieces that uh, were left over to fix it. So anyway, I what you need to do is or what I ended up doing was opening up my uh, fabric that I was going to use for my binding and I opened it up. And whether this is right or wrong, I don't know, but this is what I ended up doing. And um, you know, you can. Uh, do what is what works for you that's what I ended up doing what worked for me all right so on the rule on our rulers there are different uh, angle markings and one of them is a 45 degree angle marking and so what you want to do is to get that 45 degree angle mark on the bottom of your fabric you know line it up there and then you can see that it's going to come like this and you, you know look you've got this little triangle in here and I'm not going to cut this because this is going in a kit that I'm doing but what you would do is get that on there and then you would you would cut this and you would pull that out and then you would um, measure like if you're doing mine were two and a half inch wide strips that's what I always do my binding and so then I would measure from where I cut it two and a half inches 
and then I would cut it again and I would keep moving over the two and a half inches and I would cut those strips and then after I had all the strips cut then I will I sewed them together and some of mine were really little because of the mistake that I had made but uh, one good thing is that uh, after you do this for a while and you do make a mistake uh, you you learn the tricks on how to uh, to fix it so I ended up fixing it and I do have enough for my binding so that's what you have to do to cut cut it on the uh, the bias you have to have it at, at the 45 degree <coughs> angle and then just cut and then just measure two and a half inches you know after that until you get what you need all right so as you can see I am here at the machine and I am ready to uh, do the applique and the thing about doing it this way is that I'm going to be appliquing and quilting it at the same time uh, that's why I wanted to have it all sandwiched together I could have done it separately and some people you know I mean you can do that that way but it was just it's just easier for me to do it do it this way sandwich it and then applique it and then it, it's quilted at the same time now if you have an older machine that does not have um, a blanket stitch on it you can use the zigzag uh, the zigzag stitch I really like the blanket stitch better um, the the newer machines that come out I would say almost all of them uh, have that uh, that stitch included in their machine because it has become so popular so if you are looking to you know do some applique and you're looking for a new machine that would be one thing that I would ask for is you know does this machine have the blanket stitch on it so that I can do some applique um, I, th I think it looks um, the finish of it when you're done with it I think the blanket stitch uh, looks a little neater uh, I think you would you'd like it better so I'm just going what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go around one of the trees and I'm just going to blanket stitch around one of the trees and we will be doing I will be doing the same thing to all of the trees um, I will I've got the red uh, thread that I'm going to be using for the red trees and whatever and I'm going to be switching it around and what I, I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to kind of tell you about the the binding on and how it goes but I'm not going to finish it because I don't have this all done it's not all applique it's not all quilted and I'm afraid it might shift on me um, when I go to do it and I don't want to have the binding pucker or whatever so I'm just kind of going to show you and then you know if you're having any problems um, there are lots of YouTube uh, videos to show you uh, you know you can call me you can come in you could you know uh, watch the video again watch uh, a couple other ones um, to help you but uh, I think for time's sake it will be uh, quicker and uh, easier just to, to do it this way okay so right now I am going to get started on this and I am I've got I think I have it all ready to go we'll soon find out. we'll soon we will soon find out all right As I'm moving down this tree that the fabric is moving too so I definitely do not want to put this binding on until I get all of this these on here so I'm going to end there I'm going to turn it you see you can see a little bubble here and that's why I don't want to put that binding on before all of the trees are um, applique down Usually when I applique, after I've appliqued for a while, my eyes get really tired. So I do have um, 
a pair of mag glasses, magnifying glasses that I uh, wear if I do a lot of applique, but I didn't want to put them on because I didn't want to scare you when um, having them on and doing this. One tree is applique down, and on the back, you can see that it, you can't, well, it's pretty busy fabric back here, but um, it has quilted it down, it's holding it, and I will do the, re do the same to uh, the rest of these. Uh, and like I said, I'll do the green ones with the green thread and the red, and get some other kind of, of stuff, uh, you know, a thread of different color uh, for the stars and, uh, you know, and the tree trunks. So that's what we're going to do on that, and I'm going to show you just how to get started on, on this binding, and then uh, I think that you can go on by yourself. All right, I'm here at the machine, and I've got, this is the binding fabric, and like I said before, it has been uh, cut and sewn on, it's on the bias, so it does have that stretch to it. And I'm, I put the machine on basting, and I'm just going to sew like from one tree to the other just to show you how this um, binding that's cut on the bias how it is easily turned so that you can get that circular motion and then I'm going to stop and um, show you how to fold it back under and then uh, from that point I really do think that you can uh, go on uh, by yourself so uh, and I'm not going to back stitch or do any of that other stuff that I usually do I just want you to get the idea of how this is going to go and you can see the way I've got this position down here that it it's already curving it's already on the you know it's on the curve and you know you've got this which is sticking up but that is what's going to be turned over to the other side so there should be no problem that I anticipate at this moment all right, so I'm just gonna do this, do the quarter inch, hold it in, and I'm gonna go like right to this pin, and I'm gonna stop. Um, and I'll take it out, and I will show you. Get rid of these. I hate threads. Okay, get these out of here. All right, so this is what we have. You know, I just want that short distance. You can see it's a basting stitch. It's a real wide stitch. So what, after you would go all the way around, then you would turn this, and it would go like this on this side, and then you would just stitch it down. And because it is on the bias, it will go very easily. It will turn very easily, and you will be able to to get it like you know press it down and then sew it by hand or you can even sew in the ditch here um, and it will give the illusion that uh, that you turned it and you sewed it uh, by hand on the back so this is what this one will look like and I wasn't real sure in the beginning about this fabric for the the binding but I think it's gonna really it's going to really look nice with with all of the rest and so when you're finished, your project should look very similar to this. And so here you can see that I flipped it over, and you can see how easily that this one, and this is the one that I did a few years ago, how, you know, easy. And, and on this one, I was a good girl, and I did it by hand the way you're supposed to, but probably if I did it, did it now for uh, time's sake I probably would 
go right around in the ditch. But this is the project for today, and I, you know, like I said, if you have any problems, uh, let me know, and I'll be happy to help, and I hope you enjoyed it, and, you know, like, I just can't wait to see pictures of uh, what you decide you're going to put on here to decorate your home for the Christmas season. So, have fun. See you next time.